previously on Seek as a Construct. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Seek as a Construct. This is going to be a new, shorter, briefer review type format that I'm going to do on the show. It'll mostly be audio only, but I'll try to have some visuals as well to go along with what I'm reviewing. And in today's first episode, I'm going to review something that Warner Brothers Home Video had sent me to review and check out, which is Constantine, The House of Mystery, a new animated movie from DC that features uh, John Constantine, obviously, if you're a fan of him, which I'm a big fan. And it also has three other short films on this Blu-ray. But we're not going to talk about all those today. I want to keep this show kind of short uh, so I could do these really quickly and get them out to you and try to keep more content coming on the channel since I've been falling behind lately. So I don't want to waste a lot of time and I don't want these to go too long. So we'll try to keep them around the five minute mark. And today we're going to focus just on the John Constantine House of Mystery part of this movie and the other three short films that are included in this, we will break down and talk about in the next episodes coming up. So I hope you enjoy and let me know down below what you think of this new format and what your thoughts on Constantine, the House of Mystery are. Here we go. The first thing I thought that was really cool about this is that it takes place right after Apocalypse War. So if you remember the big, you know, Apocalypse War movies that they did, the two-parter, where it was, the, you know, all the Justice League, the New 52 animated versions of the characters fighting Darkseid, taking their battle, you know, to save humanity after most of them have been turned into, you know, robots with the anti-life equation and using Cyborg and everything. It was a really cool movie. I really liked it. And at the end of it, you had John Constantine talk to The Flash and say, hey, why don't you try to go back in time and undo all this? And so because John Constantine was the catalyst of that, that's what this story is. And I honestly would have never come up with an idea like this when I was watching this. I was like, you know what? That's pretty clever is to kind of really put a one last button on that universe, you know, before now we have this new DC shared universe where it has like Batman Long Halloween and Superman Man of Tomorrow and the um, the World War II J JSA members. I think that's all part of the same universe, uh, similar animation styles. So I liked this. I liked that this was like a one last, you know, nod to that new 52 animated universe. And so that's what you have. You have John waking up now that he's talked the flash into going back in time and changing everything. Now John wakes up in the house of mystery. And he remembers the Apocalypse War. He remembers everything. He remembers losing Zatanna. And he's kind of confused because when he wakes up in the House of Mystery, he's walking around and he ends up finding Zatanna, who's still alive. Uh, and they're throwing him a birthday party along with other friends like the Demon and, you know, Etrigan the Demon and stuff or Jason Blood. And then they also have two kids together. So it, it's kind of like, a, you know, a, just a weird scenario where John wakes up and he's like, wait. Did I get a happy ending after all this? And then all of a sudden, all of his friends, everyone at the birthday party, his kids, everything, they start getting sick and they start coughing up blood and then they all drop dead. And then a few seconds later, they turn into demons and then they kill John. And then he wakes up again. And it's very much like Groundhog Day or like one of my favorite episodes of Supernatural where uh, Sam keeps waking up over and over every time he dies or does something wrong, uh, which is obviously a nod to Groundhog's Day. So uh, so I really like that. I mean, I really like stories like that. And that even goes back before Groundhog's Day. But there's been stories like that where the main hero is just in a loop, you know, just constantly doing the same thing over and over. And that's pretty much what this whole movie is, is John Constantine in a Groundhog's Day scenario, he keeps waking up in the House of Mystery and figuring out what he has to do next, and then he dies. And every time he tries something new, one you know he might go outside one time, and that leads him to the Spectre, and he sees the Spectre is kind of watching over him, uh, making sure he's taking his punishment for essentially undoing time. Um, and then you know the House of Mystery itself is you know kind of punishing John, and the universe wants to punish John. And there's all these elements going on, and there's these demons that uh, John has made deals with, you know, to sell his soul. Uh, who have to come and claim, you know, try to get his soul at one point in the story. So it's just a lot of fun. I actually really liked this story overall. You know, I think uh, the format, because they, you know, could only tell like a 25 minute or so story, I think doing it with a Groundhog's Day loop and everything, it worked. And it still had kind of a, a little bit of an emotional impact because you see that John really wanted happiness. In the beginning, when he thinks he has it, he really wants it and he wants to hold on to it. And then something triggers uh you know the opposite to happen and it turns out he's not in like a paradise scenario and i don't want to spoil too much and talk about you know what the specter is how he's involved and, and what really is going on here in this story 
but it's it's just really well done, I thought. And uh, Matt Ryan, who returns as the voice of John Constantine, is fantastic. Ray Chase, who plays Richie and Etrigan and Jason Blood. Robin Atkins Dowles, uh, who plays Gary and Negral. You have Gray Griffin as Beelzebub and Della and Jack, which are the two kids of Constantine and Zatanna. Uh, Camilla Lunnington, who is playing Zatanna. And Damian O'Hare, who plays Ashox and Chase, or Chas, I should say. And, uh, and then you have Lou Diamond Phillips as the Spectre. Really, really great cast. Directed by Matt Peters written by Ernie Altbacher. I thought overall it was really well done, and I honestly think if you're out there and you're a John Constantine fan, I think you'll like this. I think it's worth the price because not only do you get this movie, but you get three other short films also that, like I said, we're going to talk about in the next upcoming episodes. Um, And then I'm also going to get into some Moon Knight stuff. So for you Marvel fans out there, we'll be breaking down some of those episodes too because I've been really enjoying that. And that's what this show will be. It'll be short reviews like this, uh, where I don't give away too many spoilers, but I just kind of give you my my thoughts and kind of summarize essentially what the story is. And that's what this is. John Constantine in a Groundhog's Day scenario in the House of Mystery. It's really fun. I highly recommend picking up on Blu-ray or digital right now. Thank you all so much for watching the show. As always, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'd love to hear if you've seen this movie, what you think of it, um, you know, pros, cons, all that stuff. I'd love to hear down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.